Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. This morning, I woke up to at least a half dozen emails from photographers who saw a YouTube video where they were talking about a great new feature found in Lightroom. These people were emailing me because they cannot find this great new feature found in Lightroom, and they were asking me if I knew why. Yes, I do know why. The reason why you can't find this great new feature is because it's not available yet. At least, it's not available to you yet. You see, when Adobe updates one of their applications, they don't issue the update to the entire world all at one time because it would probably crush their servers. So they do what is called a soft rollout. They'll issue it to part of the world one day, then another part of the world the next day, and so on. So... Apparently, the person who did this video received the update, but many of us have not. Well, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about what this update is because it is available in Camera Raw, and it has been in Camera Raw for a while, so I'm fairly confident that the entire world will be able to access this new feature in Adobe Camera Raw, and they can expect to see it in Lightroom very soon. Now, as you can see, I do have Lightroom open. I want to start our discussion about this new feature here. This new feature has to do with profiles. As you probably know, Adobe uses profiles to interpret the color, contrast, and tone of the RAW file. So this is something that you should do very early in your workflow. As a matter of fact, I recommend that you do it third in your workflow. That is, you should in my opinion, reduce noise first if needed. You should crop next if needed. Then you should choose your profile because it is the initial interpretation. The profile is the initial interpretation of the color, contrast, and tone, and all of your editing should be on top of it. Now, there are a number of different profiles available in Lightroom and Camera Raw, and there's third-party profiles available as well. Now get to the profiles, you need to go to the profile browser. In Lightroom Classic, go to the basic tab and click, I call them bricks, these four little bricks here. And you'll notice all the different profiles. At the top, you have Adobe Raw Profiles. And by default, it should use the Adobe Color Profile. So this is the profile that gets applied to all of the images as they're imported in Lightroom, all the raw files as they're imported into Lightroom. Now you can change your default so it uses a different profile, but if you haven't, it's going to use this Adobe Color Profile. If you went up here and you clicked on this black and white button, it by default will use the Adobe Monochrome Profile. So that's um, the two different profiles that are the default profiles that it will use. Now, there are other profiles you could choose. You can see there's a number of different Adobe profiles here. Portrait, standard, neutral. You could hover over them to get a preview of what they look like. There's also, if it's a RAW file, camera matching profiles. These are the profiles that are in the camera. So you could access these from within Lightroom as well. I mentioned that there are third-party profiles that you could purchase and apply. And I have my profiles right here that I sell. Then below that, we have some other profiles that are available to everyone. And in all versions of Lightroom and Camera Raw, you can see artistic and so on in black and white. So these profiles, I like to call them maybe blanket profiles in that they will get put on a RAW file the same exact way, no matter what the RAW file is. So if you have, say, an image such as this that has a pond in it and whatever, and I go to this artistic uh, batch of profiles and I do artistic zero one you can see how it does this kind of really cool tunes uh, cool tones to the image just kind of get applied that way then if I go to a totally different image a totally different scene and I go to artistic zero one it gets put on this the exact same way and then it gets the sky gets interpreted the exact same way the grass is the exact same way and so on well, this new feature is something called Adaptive Profiles. Adaptive Profiles use AI to examine the scene, and they'll get applied to that scene uniquely to that scene so that the profile is hopefully a little more nuanced for the actual scene that you're applying it to. Now, again, it's not yet in at least my version of Lightroom. Hopefully it is in your version of Lightroom. Until then, you can access 
it in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, to do that from Lightroom, you have to do it a very specific way. I'm going to send both of these images at once into Photoshop so that I could access them. To do that, I clicked on one. I'm going to hold the Command Cam, my Mac Control Can, a PC, and click on the other one in the film strip so that they're both selected down here. Then I need to right-click on one of the two thumbnails. Don't right-click on the actual image because it will only send this image if you do it that way. So right-click on one of the two down here and then go up to Edit In. And don't go up to the top to edit in Adobe Photoshop. That won't work. You need to go down here and open as a smart object in Photoshop. So you have to do it that way to access these, this new adaptive profile in Adobe Camera Raw. I don't know why it's like that, but that's the way it is. You have to open it up as a smart object. Now, if you're using Photoshop as a standalone application, you can just open a RAW file up into it, and it will automatically open the RAW file up in Adobe Camera Raw by default, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, so we have this image. Um, now, you may be thinking, well, you know, I could get to Camera Raw by going up to the Filter menu, then down to Camera Raw. Well, if you do it that way, you won't be able to access it. Um, I don't know. I don't make the rules. Uh, you can see that they're not here. So you have to do it a different way. To do it, as long as you open the image up as a smart object from Lightroom, you'll be able to then just double-click right on the thumbnail in the Layers panel, and then it will open the image up into Camera Raw, and the adaptive profiles will be available. Go to the Profile Browser. Now, by default, it used the Adobe Color Profile. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to go to the new adaptive profiles, which are right here. And you can see there are two. There's a color one and a black and white one. And it says beta. Now I'm going to hover over the color one and we'll see the difference. Here's the just normal Adobe color. Here's the adaptive color. Normal color, adaptive color. Normal color, adaptive color. Now let's close it down for a minute and go back to camera raw and go to the Adobe monochrome. This is the one that would be used. If we went up here and just clicked this black and white button, you can see that's the one it uses. Then we'll go, we'll close that down. We'll go to the adaptive and we'll see what this black and white one looks like. So there's the normal black and white profile. Here's the adaptive profile. Normal profile, adaptive profile. So let's say you like this one. And you could do your editing on top of this. And that's why I recommend you do, uh, you apply a profile early in your, early in your workflow. Uh, the the way I recommend to do it is to remove noise early. So if your image has noise in it and you need to remove noise and you could use the AI noise that's available in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, um, then do that, to noise, you know, the AI noise reduction. It's called the noise in Lightroom and in Adobe Camera Raw. Do that first. Then if you need to crop, I crop next. Then I apply the profile and then I go from there with my editing. Uh, from that point on, you'll notice then if we go like to light, nothing's moved. So it's just a regular old profile from that point forward. So then I'm just going to cancel out of this. Let's go to the other image and I'll show you what that looks like um, in Camera Raw with these new adaptive profiles. So again, we'll go to the profile browser. We're using the Adobe Color Profile by default. We'll go to this adaptive section and here is the new adaptive color profile. And there's before. There's the adaptive profile and before, adaptive profile and before. Let's go back up to the camera raw and go to that monochrome. This is the default black and white profile. And here is the new adaptive black and white profile and so on. You can see it's mainly brightening up the foliage on both of them. In my opinion, that's what it's doing. But again, it's adaptive. So it's going to be different for different scenes. If you're a wildlife photographer and you have a, a photo of a red fox, it's going to adapt its, itself to that red fox in a very specific way that is different than the default Adobe Color Profile would. So there's the difference. And you want to apply it, just apply it. Now again, uh, this feature apparently is in some people's Lightroom. So look in your Lightroom and see if it's there. From what I hear, only the color one or only the black and white one, one or the other, I think only the black and white one, is available in Lightroom, at least for some people now. For me, it's not available at all. Neither are available. But hopefully, um, this gets rolled out soon to the entire world. 
And then you could just, if you're a Lightroom user and you don't often use Photoshop, you'll be able to access them there. So if I did um, apply, in this case, that adaptive color profile for this one, I then would click OK. It brings it back over here and you could see that um, there's that adaptive profile inside of Photoshop. Now in here, if I go here and double click on this, now here's the bad part, what I'm getting to. All right, so we're in the like, default using uh, Adobe Camera Raw or Adobe Raw profile, and we'll go to the adaptive and use this, and we'll click OK. Now we're here. Now what do we do? Well, if I close down Photoshop, because these profiles aren't yet available in Lightroom, uh, when you click Save like this, when you're in Lightroom, it won't be able to see them. All right, see what it's doing. It's saving it as a TIFF file. You can see this TIFF file came over. Here's the actual raw file. Let me uh, hit the I key. Okay, so here's the raw file, .nef, Nikon uh, raw file taken with the Nikon Z6. And here is the image from Photoshop. You can see it's a TIFF file. So here's the Nikon raw file, .nef. This was taken with the Nikon DA50. And then here is the image from Photoshop, you can see it's a TIFF file. So that is the downside of all this uh, right now, is if you're a Lightroom only user, uh, you can jump over to Photoshop by sending it over as a smart object and access the adaptive profile. But you need to do all your editing then in Camera Raw because when you bring it back into Lightroom and you want to do editing, it's not going to come back as a RAW file. It will come back as a TIFF file. And if you go to the profile browser, you can see there's really uh, no access there to the to the profile that you used in Adobe Camera Raw. So hopefully that made sense. And hopefully they just roll out this update to everyone soon. So uh, the point will be moot at that, at that end. So that's it. That's this new feature that is in Camera Raw and uh, hopefully will be in Lightroom soon. And by the way, this isn't something you have to turn on in Camera Raw. You know, for the... Um, glass reflection you had to turn that beta feature on in camera raw. i did a video on that otherwise you won't see it this isn't something that you have to turn on it is in camera raw for everyone even if you don't have anything clicked to have it turned on i hope that made sense too so that's it that's this uh new feature hopefully uh, we all see it soon thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon